In this video, I'm going to share with you how to maintain a hotel vacuum. You ready? Let's go. Welcome, I'm Malachi Simmons Jr. and this is Hotel Soldier, with a mission to provide you all things hotel to your front lines. On this channel, I give you the three eyes with information, instructions, and interviews. Information on all things in the hotel industry, instructions on various tasks in the hotel industry, and interviews with individuals associated with the hotel industry. Now, if you're new to Hotel Soldier and you want to see this video and other videos like this video, hit on the red subscribe button at the bottom, along with the notification bell for Hotel Soldier. One of the most important tools inside a hotel is the hotel vacuum. You may find one at the front desk or the front office because they might use the vacuum in the lobby or vacuum the offices. Maintenance engineer may have one so they can clean the carpets and vacuum the floors. The restaurant might have one so they want to get ready for new guests coming in. The gym may have one so they can have the facility looking nice. Or the spa so you have that nice fresh feeling. Or outlet stores, hey, we need customers and guests to come back, to return. Or a meeting planner may have one so they can prepare for those scheduled and unscheduled meetings. But however, most of the time you find a hotel vacuum attached to a side of a housekeeping cart. So let me show you how to maintain a hotel vacuum. So in the housekeeping video, I showed you the vacuum is usually attached to the side of the housekeeping cart. So let me show you the vacuum in detail, parts of the vacuum, and how to maintain it. There are so many different types of vacuums. Now, the vacuum that a hotel may use may use a commercial style vacuum. Now, those commercial style vacuum may have a, a wide body in the middle, along with a lever that contains the vacuum bag inside and also a canister. Now, you may also have some big industrial size vacuums that you know look like a steam cleaner and a carpet cleaner all together. Now also, you may have a this type of vacuum, which is a low body profile vacuum. You know, the, the, the motor sits on the bottom of the vacuum itself. Same principles, because you know, all the vacuums have the same principle, no matter what. Basically, uh, you got an electric cord, device for power, plug into the wall, one outlet, sends the power to the motor, the body of the, the vacuum, and it pushes along the brush assembly. Now that brush assembly consists of a, a beater bar, and also some bristles to pick up any foreign debris on the ground. Now, once it's picked up the, all the foreign debris on the ground, it sends the debris up into the hoses, into the vacuum bag or the canister. Real simple, simple process. Now, the main thing about the vacuum, no matter what, you gotta be able to maintain it. Use your manual. The manual will tell you everything. The manual will tell you warranty information, troubleshooting guys, uh, what to do in malfunctions, um, basically how to, how to maintain the vacuum, how to use it, drop it right here in the manual. Always consult the manual no matter what, got any instructions, some companies that got 1-800 numbers, you call them and hey I got a question about my vacuum and why it's not working, well there's a reason why, just consult the manual. Now the first part of the vacuum that I want to show you is, is the handle. You might not think nothing of it but most vacuums the handle is like a connection port into the vacuum. The handle's down, the core is in, it works. Every once in a while you're like, hey, my vacuum's not working because the handle's not pushed down properly. Sometimes it, there's, a, there's a disconnect between the handle and also the vacuum because of the power. Now, the next section I'm gonna tell you, the next part, is the core. Now, one of the most important parts of the vacuum is 
the cord itself. Now, just like simple, you know, the cord allows power to the vacuum, to the motor. The motor is used to pick up any foreign objects on the floor, any debris, any hair follicles, dead skin cells, dirt, and grime. So what you want to do, you want to make sure that the cord is always stored and maintained while you vacuum properly. Now also on the cord, you want to make sure there's no kinks in it and no cuts in it. And if there are any kinks and cut, you want to repair them as soon as possible. This one little kink or cut will make you cause you to get a new vacuum. It might be a simple preventive maintenance from a cord. All right. So also on the cord, when you vacuum it, you want to make sure to maintain the, the remaining rest of the cord in your hand or either store it back on the vacuum while you're vacuuming. You don't want to have it laying on the floor because one thing you don't want to run over the vacuum once again with the vacuum itself once making a, a kink or a cut what's inside the cord thus making the vacuum not be able to work and function properly so once you finish using the vacuum you want to do is you want to put it back on properly while you put it on back properly you want to make sure that the cord is a, properly attached to the vacuum as it is fastened inside and so power can allow it to get to the vacuum itself now on this particular vacuum there is a, a handle right here that actually releases the cord itself that you can take off and maintain on. Well, I'm, I'm gonna leave it up and I'm gonna put the cord back on the vacuum properly. And once again, the remaining amount of cord that you have in your hand or laying on the floor, try not to run over it because you don't make no kinks, no cuts in it, you damage the vacuum. All of a sudden you have a vacuum that does not work for simple preventive maintenance. You want to take the cord, put it back on, so forth. Flash your cord on your on the vacuum. So after the cord, the next area is this brush assembly. Now on this particular vacuum, I can take the brush assembly apart, and I'm gonna take it apart so you can take a look at it real quick. Next piece is this brush assembly. Now this brush assembly consists of a, a beater bar inside and I'll see little bristles on the beater bar itself. You know, I'm, I'm gonna take it apart real quick and I'm gonna show you. So this beater bar, what you wanna do to maintain this is make sure no hair is inside of it. Any foreign debris and any dirt or grime inside of it. What you want to do is, if there's hair inside of it, you want to take a scissors and probably cut along the bar itself and don't hit the bristles, just to discard all the stuff off it. Then you know, take your hand and pull all the stuff off it, and um, cause it to work properly. So, because you might be using it and you be wondering, why is my vacuum not picking up anything? Well, you might have a whole bunch of stuff trapped inside the beetle bar, all in the bristles. Now. The best thing to do is, like I say, you want to clean it out, or you may have to call the company for another one, or um, like I say, simply just maintain it. Because after a while, it does have a type of fair wear and tear, and these bristles do wear down. So you may have to replace it, but the main idea is just continue to keep on taking a look at it, make sure that there's nothing trapped inside of it, and um, so forth. Because, you know, basically, this bar hits the ground, picks up any debris, and just forces inside the vacuum. Now, while the motor's running, creates a suction, Picks up all the debris, sits inside, into the bag, or into the canister, or into your vacuum. Real simple. Beetle bar, you want to maintain it just to make sure everything is running, working properly. Let me put it back in. Now the next part of the vacuum is very important. The vacuum bag. Now the vacuum bag goes inside your little vacuum container or you may have a canister itself. The canister, you simply just take the canister out, wash it up, warm water, make sure all the debris out, put it back inside. Real simple. Vacuum bag, you want to discard it. Reason why? Because once again, this vacuum bag may held some hair follicles, bad skin cells or old skin cells, um, dirt, debris, anything on thing might be inside this vacuum bag. 
And also, this vacuum bag eliminates odor because whatever in it might be smelling. You might want to just get rid of it. And also, the vacuum bag may stop suction. You have a vacuum bag that's full, it's hard for it the vacuum to breathe. It's like anything else. You got debris trapped in the hoses and stuff because of the vacuum bag. Now, also with the, the vacuum bag, you got to check the hoses that connect to the vacuum bag to make sure nothing is obstructing any type of suction. And you're wondering why you keep on vacuuming, vacuuming, and vacuuming it, and nothing's happening because you got some probably some type of foreign object obstruction inside. And this is a simple check. All you got to do is just check it every day to make sure the vacuum bag is, is not full and make sure that uh, there's nothing obstructing it. It's real simple, real easy. And that's the way that you use and maintain your vacuum. Now, one of the most important tools that you may find usually attached to the side of a housekeeping cart is the hotel vacuum. Now, make sure to click on the like button and leave a comment. And if you want to see this video and other videos like this video, click on the red subscribe button at the bottom along with the notification bell for Hotel Soldier, where the mission is value all things hotel to your front lines.